What's the best material to make a watch out of? Is it plastic, steel, titanium, or maybe something else? Well, today, we're gonna find out. I've assembled a huge variety of watches and watch cases, all constructed of different materials with different coatings applied to them. Then we'll do the unthinkable. We're gonna scratch each and every one of them to see which case materials you should buy and which you probably shouldn't, if you want a durable watch at least. Let's introduce the contenders. Ding, ding, ding. First up, the GOAT, 360NL stainless steel. I say GOAT, but I really mean go to, as this is the material you'll find in most modern wristwatches. This sample was taken from the Wenger dress watch, which was sacrificed for our previous crystal test video. In terms of other standard materials, we've got two plastic Casio digitals, one black and one silver. Then we have the chromed brass Casio MTP1302. This is a popular choice for low end watches, but is generally considered inferior to steel. Similarly, we also have a Vostok made of 304 steel, a metal often over overlooked in favor of 316L. Then there's this titanium Loris. This is just plain titanium to my knowledge with no fancy coatings. To round out the more standard offerings, I've purchased a bronze watch. Bronze isn't sought after for its durability, but more for its unique visual appeal. So it's probably gonna get slapped in this contest. I've also got my hands on this 904L steel case from Thai watch brand Wise. So thanks to them for providing it. Luxury brand Rolex is known to use this grade of metal under the name Oyster Steel. Some sites claim it offers increased durability, while others say it's mainly for aesthetics or corrosion resistance. Outside of those more typical offerings, I've also got a range of proprietary cases for us to test out. Many watch companies make or market custom case materials and coatings, usually advertising them as being superior to regular materials in one way or another. The one I'm probably least confident in is Swatch's Bioceramic. Does that reference to ceramic have any substance? Well, I've also managed to grab this ceramic cased Braun watch for a direct comparison. We then have a Luminox watch, which comes with a Carbonox polycarbonate case. I'm keen to see if this is just a gimmick. Similar can be said of the Marathon fiber shell cases, which some of you suggested I also include in this test. Two more recommended by you guys with the hardened steel coatings used by Trasker and Sin. Thanks to both of those brands for providing me with cases to destroy today. Thanks also to RZE for providing their new and much better looking Resolute 2, a titanium watch using their trademarked Ultra Hex coating. Then we have the much loved Citizen Super Titanium. Some places state that this is a separate alloy entirely rather than just a coating. I've also lobbed in the core excursion we showed in a previous video to see how a PVD coated steel watch compares. Lastly, we have the overwhelming favorite heading into this competition, the world leader in wristwatch technology, the legendary tin skin 3.0 construction from Spaghetti Scametti. My scratch test picks are shaking in fear. Yeah, this channel merch, which you can actually buy on our site scametti.store, is actually made of some sort of zinc alloy, which is another widely used budget material. There are of course other coatings out there, but this is all I could get hold of or afford. But here's the way it works. I've got a Mohs hardness test kit. The picks inside it are graded from two to nine, with nine being the hardest. Essentially, the harder a case is, the higher the pick number required to scratch it. So the higher the score, the better. I'll link the test kit below if you wanna buy one for yourself. Of course, this test only measures scratch resistance and not any other factor. We're also running a charity auction for some of these scratched watches and cases, which you'll find linked in the video description. If you wanna get one for cheap, there you go. Are any of these brands lying about their product's performance? Let the scratch game commence. I forgot to mention the awards. We've got three of them to give out. We've got overall winner, biggest surprise, and biggest disappointment. So stick around to see who wins. All cases easily coped with pick number two. Yes, even the resin watches and the infamous Spaghetti Scametti. Pick three, however, posed much more of a challenge for some of our contenders. And yeah, we are scratching already and I can feel that and you can probably hear it. Yes, the cheapest competitor, the venerable F91, is unsurprisingly our first fatality. It's scratched deeply at level three, but is it alone in its plight? Well, the silver Casio A158 isn't quite as expected. Uh, I think it has scratched, but the scratches are far less deep and prominent than those on the black watch. So it's definitely 
a little bit better these plated watches. The chrome's brass case, which I had low expectations for, passed with no issues, as did all of the steel watches and the untreated titanium. Despite being a fairly soft material, bronze also had no trouble here. Unfortunately, a few outliers weren't so lucky. Uh, <laughs> it is scratching um, maybe fractionally less than the Casio F91, but it is scratching worse than the silver Casio, as you can see, just like plastic. For years, commenters on my channel have speculated that Swatch's bioceramic is simply plastic with no notable performance advantage. Based on this result, you're correct, at least when it comes to scratches. The ceramic brawn for comparison wasn't touched in the slightest, and spoiler alert, goes on to make a far deeper run. Luminox's Carbonox case crashed out in similar fashion with deep grooves at level 3. That is about the same as Swatch's bioceramic. In fact, the only polycarbonate watch to put up a fight was the Marathon GPQ, which accrued shallower surface scratches than the other plastic options. While those were somewhat predictable, what came next certainly wasn't. Now that is, I don't believe it's actually left a scratch, but it certainly left a mark, as you can see, which wasn't the case on one or two of these other coated watches. And it isn't wiping away super easily. Now, what I will say is it is bronze colored, so it could still be residue, or if it's simply not that good, we will see at higher levels. Will this be a shock early exit? Surely Spaghetti Scametti will be next to fall. Oh my goodness. Yeah, there's actually no scratches, which is remarkable. We'll see how far it goes. Level four was where the industry standard 316L began to hit trouble. Now I can hear the 316L case this time around. I don't think there's scratches to any notable depth, but it has definitely left a mark that doesn't just wipe away this time. While we'll see 316L in the next round, we won't be seeing the Casio A158, which succumbed to pick number four with ease. Chrome plated brass is another material used in low cost watches. Can it keep up with steel this time? Um, I wasn't sure at first. I thought it was just a mark again. So this is only light scratches, so we will test it again at level five. It does appear to be, uh, at least for now, slightly worse than 316L steel. Despite being lesser used than the 316L steel, the 304 case performed better at level four. The Loris Field Watch wasn't quite so resilient. That is starting to scratch. These are more visible because of the matte finish of the case. They're not actually deep at all, but it's clearly starting to, to scratch the surface there. You can wipe them away a tiny bit, but we'll see how this compares at level five. It may have coped well at level three, but the fourth pick easily chewed into the side of the bronze watch with deeper grooves than the titanium and brass cases. It's safe to say that bronze is eliminated I wasn't sure what to expect of the 904L case before this competition, but it seemed to be marginally outperforming 316L by this stage, more in line with the 304 steel, perhaps slightly better. Any marks on the ceramic case have simply wiped off so far, while the Traska, Sin, and RZE all follow it through with flying colors. As you may have guessed, the Marathon bowed out at this stage, but how did the Citizen fare after its sketchy showing last time out? That looks like it's scratching. Let me take a closer look with my uh, watchmaker's loop and actually see if that, that is uh, scratches or just a mark. These scratches, they kind of are there, but they are super, super light scratches. But at these lower levels, in terms of at least leaving a visual mark, this super titanium is worse than some of the other materials. But we'll see just how far it can last with this level of like surface, super light scratches. The PVD watch also seemed to hit a hurdle. Pick has felt really gritty, and yeah, we've got scratches. At least it felt like we did, and then, wow. I just was able to wipe them away, how unusual. There's no actual permanent scratches there. Yeah, that one is doing better than expected. What about the fan favorite, Scametti? <laughs> if Scametti beats Citizen, I'm gonna be gobsmacked. Oh my God. <laughs> no joke. There's just absolutely no scratch whatsoever. There's no bite, no marks, nothing. Super cheap zinc alloy case 
Um, at least at levels three and four, yeah, it's got less visual marks than Citizen's highly rated and hyped Super Titanium. Who knows, maybe, maybe this is going to be the actual genuine winner of this contest. So far, we have 12 of our original 18 contenders still remaining, but round five will be the most brutal yet. Stay tuned through this quick ad message from our sponsor to see the carnage unfold. FlexiSpot essentially doubled the number of watches we could include in this contest. They sent me their E5 sit-stand desk to help me rebuild my whole YouTube setup to increase my video output. Mounting everything to the desk should speed up my recording process and make everything smoother. It also opens up the option to have more stood up videos <laughs> going back to the old days here now standing desks like this tend to be pretty expensive but flexispot offers some of the lowest prices in the industry without skimping on quality in fact this e5 desktop is heavier duty and the frame itself houses a smoother quieter motor than the existing standing desk in my office which retails for double the cost from a rival brand it almost makes me wish i hadn't purchased that one it even arrived with a large removable cable management strip as well as a selection of handy extras it's easily handled all of my heavy duty clamps for lights and microphones so I'm really excited to use it moving forward. To change the way you work, check out FlexiSpot now on Amazon using the link in the video description, as well as their flexible cable spine for an even cleaner look. So the scratches on this 360NL case at level 5 are still really quite light. This time there are scratches on the bezel, as you can see here. So it's definitely scratching more, but I wanna see how far this can really go. At the previous level, the Chrome's brass case exhibited some minor scratches. Is it game over at level five? And that is scratching readily now. So that is uh, scratching more, I would say, than the steel. You can now just scratch that one at will. So. I think that is the elimination of our chromed brass watch. I thought the untreated titanium case would similarly meet its maker, but it seems to enjoy hanging around. So the titanium is scratching at level five, slightly more than level four, but it is really not far from the 360NL steel again, surprisingly. I thought it'd be much worse. I don't think it's quite as bad as the chromed brass, so I don't think we should eliminate it. Like the 304 steel, the 904LYs started to scratch lightly at level 5, though to a lesser degree than the other untreated steel cases. Meanwhile, the ceramic and tegumented steel watches cruised through with little effort. The Trasker and RZE also advanced easily, though each showed minor marks at level 5. They aren't quite scratches, but are just visible when viewed up close. Unfortunately for Citizen, their watch scratched far more readily at level 5. Now that is just straight up scratching for sure. Feel it on the pick. You can just scratch it if and when you want. So upset result there. I wasn't expecting this one to scratch until maybe level six or seven. It scratched similarly to the 360 L steel. It really wasn't any better from this test. I'll try it again at level six just to see how it compares once more. But after that, it's probably a goner. I'd always been under the impression that a black coating on a watch would be a scratch magnet, but the PVD core watch was proving me wrong. So that has left a mark on the surface there, as you can see. Will that wipe away this time? It's a similar story to the Ultra Hex and the Trasker. This one's barely visible, super light. Another material that scrapes through is somehow the Scametti tin skin. So we have started to get some scratches finally on this exotic timepiece. It's still actually quite light scratches, as you can see. There isn't much there. It's definitely better than the Citizen at this level. I want to see how it does at level six. While the pain began at level five, level six is where we start separating the men from the boys. The contestants dropped quicker than our poor lads did in the Battle of the Sun. The 316L, 304 and 904L steel watches all perished, along with the untreated titanium, and finally, the plucky spaghetti scametti. And that is, it feels really soft now, this case material with this number six pick. But I'm really surprised at how well this is held up. It was also the final destination for one of the pre-test favorites, Citizen, whose super titanium couldn't withstand pick number six. And yeah, that is just scratching readily. Now that is definitely an elimination, as you can see, the same as the 316L steel and a couple of the others. So 
Goodbye, Super Titanium, what a shame. Stronger showings were evident elsewhere though, with the Trasker, PVD and Ultra Hex watches all performing the same at level 6 as they did at level 5. The best in this round was still the Sin Tegumented Steel, whose marks mostly wiped away, and the Brawn Ceramic, which waltzed through with no drama whatsoever. By pick 7, a clearer order had emerged. While the Ceramic maintained its lead, Wow, I have to say this Ceramic Watch is surviving really well. Behind it, a closer pack was forming. The Sin Tegumented Steel kept its nose narrowly ahead of the Trasker and RZE. All three remained very consistent, with minor scratches or marks comparable to those back at level 5. The only one that started to fall behind was the PVD Watch. Shallow scratches at level 7 again. Um, I'd say it's probably the worst out of the ones I've tried at this level. A fraction deeper than the other ones and they are more visible but some of that could be the case colour. We'll see how it does at level 8 but I've got a feeling this one may be the next out. While the last couple of rounds have been smooth sailing for our remaining materials, things started to really heat up with pick number 8. And that is the first time... Oh! Oh! I mean if there is anything there it's still... It is very minor. That's the first time we've ever seen any sort of mark on this one. So finally, the ceramic watch starts to show some signs of weakness. How did the others get on? Well, the Sin and RZE both began to show more obvious scratches and marks, but they weren't deep or sufficient enough to warrant elimination. At the time, I also let the Trasker through, as the scratches, while visible, still weren't very deep. Yeah, it's a similar kind of story again, really, to the previous couple. It feels very similar again to level... Seven. In retrospect though, after comparing the footage and the watches side by side, the scratches, they were more obvious than those last two. So unfortunately, it receives a retroactive elimination. The Trasker still edged out the PVD watch, which scratched slightly more easily at level eight. So PVD is definitely starting to scratch more noticeably this time around. That's gonna have to be the end of the PVD's road there. That's definitely deeper than all the others we've had so far at level eight. So here we have it, the final three. Will Ceramic hold on for the victory? Or can one of the final remaining metal options steal the crown? There's barely anything there. Ever so slight, like tiny, like surface marks pretty much. With performance similar to that at level eight, that effort guarantees the win for Ceramic. The question is, who will bag the silver medal? And the awards, of course. So, it's maybe a fraction worse than it was at level eight, but even still, it's only really light scratches. It's funny, it almost looks worse at level eight than nine for some reason. Now this time, there is a lot more of a scraping noise. As you can see, it's definitely slightly deeper scratches than they were at level 8. When you look at it up close though, this really isn't, you know, significantly different from the Trasker or from the Sin. So ultimately, the Tegument case narrowly trumped the RZE Ultra Hex right at the end. Though both are the strongest steel and titanium cases I've tested today respectively. Here's the tier list then. For reference, the left side of each tier is the best performer. It turns out that unlike our crystal scratch test, quite a few of these proprietary materials actually perform better than the basic untreated ones. As for awards, the clear winner was ceramic. That one was near impervious to all the picks. I think the biggest surprise must be either the PVD or ironically the spaghetti scamity tin skin. I always knew that PVD supposedly improved durability to some degree, but I was always under the impression that it was more for aesthetics than anything else, so I'm pleasantly surprised it did so well. On the other end of things, the Scametti watches were pretty much the cheapest we could lay our hands on, yet by some miracle it still finished above some huge brands and was eliminated at the same level as the steel watches. I wouldn't expect a corrosion test to go quite so well, but for scratches, it's not bad. The most disappointing award, while there are a couple of contenders, it has to go to Citizen Super Titanium. I expected this to do extremely well, as Super Titanium is advertised as five times harder than stainless steel on the Citizen website. Based on my results here though, that's simply not true. It started marking earlier than the steel watches and was eliminated at the same level, with deep scratches at level six. If anything, 
It performed marginally worse than the steel watches. It could only match the completely untreated Loris Titanium watch and got utterly trounced by the RZE Ultra Hex Titanium, which lasted three levels longer. I double checked online to ensure this model was definitely super titanium and various retailers, including Citizen themselves, confirmed that it was. Dear oh dear. For more shocking results, check out our other scratch test where we compared basically all the different watch crystals. You can click the video on screen now and the custom ones, they didn't do quite so well in that one. <laughs>